Um, today's meeting is a meeting with the North West Strategic Partnership Group. Uh, before I begin, can I give the usual reminders to members, witnesses and persons in the public gallery to turn off their mobile phones. Your request to ensure that for the duration of the meeting that those phones are turned off completely or switched to airplane safe or flight mode depending on, the, on your device. It is not sufficient for members to just put their phones on silent mode as they still continue to maintain the level of interference with the broadcasting system. Uh, so, Without further ado, I would particularly like to welcome, uh, following to our meeting today, John Kelpie, Chief Executive, uh, Derry City and Strabane District Council, Seamus Neely, Chief Executive, Donegal County Council, Councillor Seamus O'Donnell and Cahirlock, uh, Donegal County Council and Chair of the North West uh, strategic part, Northwest Strategic Partnership, uh, Councillor Gus Hastings, Derry City and Strabane District Council, and Chair of the Northwest Regional Development Group. And finally, but not least, Councillor Bernard McGuinness, uh, Donegal County Council and Vice Chair of the Northwest Development Group, uh, Tafalsha Rove, and uh, Shahinu, the most welcome. And again, the format of the meeting, as normal with witnesses, is that we will hear your opening statements and then we will go into question and answer session uh, with the members of the committee. And uh, the old proverbial privilege, uh, before we begin, uh, I have to again uh, draw to your attention, uh, witnesses are protected by absolute privilege in respect of the evidence you are to give to the committee. However, if you are directed by the committee to cease giving evidence in relation to a particular matter and you continue to do so, you are entitled thereafter only to qualified privilege in respect of your evidence. You are directed that only evidence connected with the subject matter of these proceedings is to be given and you are asked to respect the parliamentary practice to the effect that, where possible, you should not criticise or make charges against any person or persons or entity by name or in such a way as to make him or her or it identifiable. Members are also reminded of the long standing parliamentary practice to the effect that members should not comment on, criticise, or make charges against either a person outside the Houses or in an official, either by name or in such a way as to make him or her identifiable. Uh, I'd now like to call on you to make your opening statements. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Chairman, we are delighted to get the opportunity on behalf of Ireland, the North West of Ireland, to make a presentation to this committee. We have met you uh, when you were in Derry City of late. Uh, and we found it very worthwhile, very useful, and we found that the work that this committee wants to do and the change that you want to effect is very positive for all of the island, and we commend you very highly on that. Uh, as you have outlined, I am Councillor Seamus O'Donnell, I am the Chairman of Donegal County Council. I am um, also the Joint Chair of the North West Strategic Growth Partnership. I am um, joined here today by Councillor Gus Hastings, who is a member of Derry City and Strabane District Council. He is indeed Chair of the North West Regional Development Group. Uh, and Councillor Bernard McGuinness, to my extreme right, who is from Donegal County Council and is also uh, the Vice Chair of the North West uh, Regional Development Group. The Chief Executive of Derry City and Strabane District Council, John Kelpie, uh, joins me, as well as the Chief Executive Officer of Donegal County Council, Seamus Neely. And I, at this stage, will give the apologies on behalf of the Mayor of Derry, who is otherwise engaged today, uh, but wanted his apologies to be acknowledged. And I suppose the brief that we have received for today is to make a presentation by way of um, the, the limitations of your committee, how Brexit will affect us, what works we are doing within our counties and our region uh, to propel uh, the area that we represent, and how your committee can assist us in the workings that we are doing. And to put a bit of perspective on it all, uh, we will all take an opportunity to address uh, by way of a coherent uh, presentations which we will make. We will try not to go over each other, uh, and we have specific topics that each of us will cover. But to put a perspective on it all, um, Derry City uh, is the fourth largest city on this island. Uh, that has been recognised and realised uh, by the Irish Government under the uh, National Development Plan, and indeed the cross-border region uh, which services Donegal County, Derry City, Strabane District Council, 
uh, has a population in the region of 350,000 people. Uh, so we expect and want that to be recognised and realised. Uh, we want to be treated as a major centre and city region on this island, and we think that it is important for the growth uh, and for the prosperity of the people that we represent and the counties that we represent that that is understood and realised, as has been in the National Development Plan. Uh, there has been an MOU signed uh, by myself as Chairman of Donegal County Council, by John Boyle as Mayor of Derry City and Durban District Council, and indeed the Chairperson of the Northern and Western Regional Assembly. So the Northern and Western Regional Assembly has also recognised that uh, and we pay tribute to them for that recognition and indeed they held a meeting in the chambers of Derry City and Strabane District Council, something that was momentous. It was the first Regional Assembly to hold an official meeting outside of, of their own jurisdiction, I suppose, uh, and it was something that they, re they seen as a very beneficial exercise and it gave them a first-hand experience of the cooperation, the partnership, the symbiotic relationship between Donegal uh, County Council, Derry City and Strabane District Council, and indeed how we in that region are the one people. And as, as a Donegal person, uh, the city that I recognise as being my city is Derry City, and everybody that is on my side will recognise that as well. Uh, the people of Derry will recognise that Donegal is very much part of their extended, uh, I suppose, boundary limits as well and region because the names uh, of people in Derry and the surnames of people in Donegal are at one. Uh, there is such an interaction uh, between the people in that region and has down through the generations uh, that it is most unfortunate that political decisions that were made, uh, perhaps not altogether for the good or with the will of those that resided in the area, have meant that that symbiosis uh, and that partnership for many years was broken down to a degree. But we have, uh, since 1997, or at least since the mid-90s, uh, started that partnership again, and we are, are working with each other. And I believe that Donegal County Council, Derry City and Strabane District Council, are working on a cross-border basis uh, like no other jurisdiction in Europe. We are working for the benefit of both areas. We are not competing with each other. If we can get a, a company uh, or an economic driver or an education driver or anything that benefits any of the region into the region, it doesn't matter to us in Donegal if it comes to Derry. And equally, I think it's fair to say that it doesn't matter to those in Derry that it comes to Donegal because we understand and realise that they are coming to the North West and we will work together in cooper collaboration and cooperation uh, to assist in any which way that we can. 35% of the population of the region that we are from, the northwest of our uh, country, are 25 years younger. So we effectively have the youngest population in all of Europe. And that's something that we're very proud of, something we want to build on, and something that I suppose we have to work harder than other parts of this island to retain that young population within the region that we represent, and something that we'd be asking for assistance in doing. We have 40,000 uh, third-level students within the region uh, that we are representing, and they are at the Ulster University in, in Derry and McGee campus. They are at the North West Regional College and indeed at the LYIT uh, in Letterkenny. We have two major acute hospitals, uh, University Hospital in Letterkenny and indeed Altony Galvin Hospital uh, in the outskirts of Derry. And we must remember that the, the Irish Government pump major monies into the services that are available in Altony Galvin Hospital because they are done so on a cross-border basis. And it's important to, to recognise as well that the services that are available in Alta Galvin Hospital, be it from a, a cancer service or a cardiac service, they are dependent on the critical mass of the population of Donegal to sustain those services. Uh, because the, the cash injection that has been made by both governments uh, has been made because the critical mass could be established and argued that those services could be sustained there. So effectively, if we look at things such as hard borders, such as any borders, such as changes to the, uh, the, the cross-jurisdictional code that is, is currently there, uh, that creates difficulties not only from a movement point of view, but from a human level and from a level of actually making arguments to sustain services that serve the people in that region. So we want to make that point. Uh, we have and we are a sub-regional economic driver, both north and south. Uh, and the symbiotic relationship that we have uh, means that uh, with the critical mass and with the economic driving and delivery that we have in that region, uh, that we're very proud that when we try to entice, uh, I suppose, businesses or cash injection or investment into our region, 
uh, that we can do so because of the critical mass that is established uh, throughout, the, throughout the border region, uh, be it Donegal, be it Derry City and Straban, be it Tyrone, Straban and Oma, and indeed Limavady, we can argue against or with anybody uh, that the population uh, centric that we have in our region uh, means that we should have equal services or better services than most of the rest of the island because of the, the amount and population that we actually have there. And that's something that we have worked hard to establish and we have worked very, I suppose, much together in establishing that. And it's something that I suppose we see within the counties, the border counties that we are from, is somewhat in danger because of decisions that will be taken or might be taken or might not be taken. Who knows? But it is a, a very, I suppose, somewhat frustrating time, but it is equally a time of, of great thought with, with very little foresight uh, and, and much, I suppose, fear from the people in that region because consequences of decisions that will be made or won't be made in Westminster will impact more on the region that we are from than any other region in Europe. And for instance, uh, when I came down here today, I crossed the border at uh, Lifford into Straban, and that's okay, that's understandable. But equally from Donegal, you have to come back out of the north. So you have to cross it twice just to come to, to Dublin, which is, our, which is our capital city. And if we look at the, the demographic and the geography of, of Donegal, uh, our largest land border is with the north, is with the six counties. Uh, we only have around 3% of our land border is actually with the Republic of Ireland, under 10 kilometres of border with Leitrim. So we are but tied uh, to the Republic of Ireland with an umbilical cord, and it is important uh, that the, the border that we have with the six counties is, is strengthened, is cherished, is worked on, and that it isn't weakened, and that nothing by way of, of stopping progress or collaboration can be allowed to be, be drawn up. I suppose that in regards to the challenges that we have, the greatest challenge that we have outside of Brexit, of course, is the infrastructure needs that our region have. Uh, we are furthest from the centre, and we will treat Dublin as the centre, uh, but yet we have very, very poor road infrastructure into our counties and into our cities. We look at things that are taken as the norm in many other counties, but in Donegal, for instance, we have no rail. Uh, we have an airport there, it's, it's very much to the northwest of our county, but we are absolutely and totally almost dependent on road linkages into and out of our county. And the, 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 the promise, I suppose, of the upgrade of the A5N2 road network uh, was that has been on the cards since the Good Friday Agreement was signed uh, back in the late 90s. Little or no impact has been felt on the ground, and that has held us back as a region. And we would ask, as we did ask when you were in Derry, <coughs> Chairman, that every effort is made by this committee and by all of the members of the Oireachtas to fast track and to, to make it a major priority of this government and of these houses that the A5N2 has progressed. If we look at a map of this island, the only area that is not connected by major motorway or dual carriageway is the northwest of our country. And it's something that we are going to fall further behind. And when you look at it with the impending uh, decisions that are to be taken in regards to Brexit, it puts us at a serious disadvantage. And would it, had it not been for the great relationship that has been built up, firstly by the executive members of both councils, and has been copper fastened by uh, the political uh, elected representatives of both councils, of all political persuasions and none, we really would be struggling. But we have, we have really come to the plate in regards to putting Donegal, Derry and Tyrone on the map. We want to continue in that vein. We want to see support from governments on both sides, uh, from the Westminster government, from the Stormont government, but equally from the Irish government. And it's important that the A5N2 is progressed and that it's not shelved, that it's not put on ice, that there is no other buzzwords used, but that it is progressed and that shovels start going into the ground because it is that important to us. And we would ask uh, that that message is taken back. That will allow us, in effect, to realise our economic potential, uh, to realise and retain people within our own counties and regions, and it will also allow us uh, to be more connected with the rest of the island that we are all part of. And I think that it's incumbent upon all members of the Oireachtas to understand that we deserve things as equally uh, as any other part of the island. The only 
the only city region in the UK and Ireland that is actually on a jurisdictional border, and that is, is Derry City. Um, we, for instance, within Donegal County Council, up to 20% of the employees that work for our council cross the border on a daily basis. Equally, many thousands leave Donegal on a daily basis to go and work in, be it Strabane, be it Oma, be it Derry City. Um, so the movement of people and the free movement of people is so important to us. And the fact that we are, I suppose, a special case because of the cross-border jurisdictional nature of Derry City and environs, and the, the environs of Derry City spill over and well into Donegal, and that has to be realised and recognised, and we can't let any uh, negatives happen in regards to that. We have, or we had been for years, uh, planning on both sides of the border on a very back-to-back -back basis. Uh, but since the fabulous news of the Good Friday Agreement and the, the, the workings that have been done uh, by all committees and all members of all parliaments in regards to implementing the Good Friday Agreement, uh, Derry City and Strabane, and indeed Donegal County Council, have started working face-to-face, -face, talking to each other, working with each other, finding out what can be good for the region and understanding the needs of the region, not just the needs of each county. Because borders, be it county borders or boundaries between any county in the Republic of Ireland, are important and they must be overlooked. But equally, the border that we have in Donegal and Derry City and Strabane must and has to be overlooked for the benefit of all of the people within that area. And we have done that. And we must ensure, we absolutely must ensure, uh, that nothing is done to curb the good work that has been done and the relationship that exists between the two councils. On a final point for me, and I suppose the final point is here, is, is Brexit. <coughs> and I don't think we should talk too much about Brexit today, but it is important to stress a singular point. And that point is that no matter what happens or what deal, no matter how good that deal is, it will not be as good as what is currently in place between our counties. So as good as a deal that they talk about or they tell us that can be or will be or might be or might not be, it will not be as good as we currently are and we currently ex are existing. We hear talk of green cards. We hear talk of people being worried about insurance and they're in a very practical nature. But if we look and, and delve more into it about health care, about education, about the free movement of people and goods, about tariffs, um, that's frightening stuff for us in Donegal and for us in Derry. And it's something that when you, when you talk about it, about it in a real way and how it will impact on normal day-to-day -day lives, it is totally profound and flabbergasting. So what we are saying is that our position is that we would like things retained as they currently are. The Irish government, for their part, have been doing very good work on behalf of all of the citizens of this island uh, in I won't say arguing, but in, in being constructive uh, with the EU and with the UK in regards to what can come after whatever date will be decided, whether it's the 12th of April or a further date. But it is important that whatever negotiations, discussions or talks are had by anybody about Brexit, that the real impacts and negative impacts that will affect the people from our region are taken into consideration and that the people that are making those decisions know that they are going to be making decisions that will change lives for the people from our region, and it's important that that point is emphasised. I will now ask uh, John Kelpy, the Chief Executive of Derry City and Strabane District Council, uh, to continue on from where I left. Thank you, John. Go away, Kyle. Uh, thank you, Gahirla. Um, members, I suppose just to pick up on, on what Seamus has said, um, all, all cities across the country, um, and indeed all cities across Europe, face very significant challenges these days in terms of sustainable growth, economic growth, social issues, cohesion issues, all of that. Um, and it's probably true that those that, that are attaining some degree of success in tackling those issues um, are doing so because they are now collaborating at a wider regional level. Um, they understand the concept of, of a wider city region, so local authorities around cities are now beginning to pull their efforts together to act as a more coherent sub-region of, of whatever um, state uh, the city exists. And it's with that in mind and looking at the success of other city regions that uh, Derry City and Strabane and Donegal have begun this new collaboration. Um, 
for decades, as Seamus has said, both counties have collaborated um, on many, many projects and have been very successful. It's probably true to say, however, that a lot of those projects have been perhaps single issue focused and there hasn't been that wider strategic collaboration at a city region level to tackle at a strategic level the big macro issues. So that's what's new, that's what has changed uh, in the Northwest over the last three or four years. Um, there's a really new integrated strategic approach um, and it's at four levels. Um, firstly, within our own councils, um, we have each restructured um, back in 2014, 2015, um, with the reform of local government in both jurisdictions that acted as a catalyst um, for both councils to look at economic development in a new way. Um, with new powers that came to councils, it provided that impetus. And so each council has done that um, with reference to the other. And then at Northwest level, while that collaboration always existed, these new structures have emerged, and we'll, we'll say a little bit about that later on. At national level, we understand now as a city region that we can't um, uh, drive forward the northwest city region on our own, that we must collaborate with both governments. And the degree of collaboration um, with both governments has accelerated tremendously in the last number of years. And the fact that we're here today is evidence of that. And we've obviously been, been here before, and that relationship is maturing and developing. And at international level, um, we now collectively um, market um, the city region as one place. We um, hold joint investment visits. Um, we are looking at a joint tourism strategy. We're looking at the benefits of both places overlapping and the highly competitive world market that other city regions are competing in. It's very important that we do that. And so we do that, and those new ways of working are the ultimate aim of which is to drive forward the city region, um, to be very, very clear that what we're doing is place-based leadership, the place being the cross-border jurisdiction that the city region sits in, that we have completely shared objectives, that we completely work in partnership, and very importantly, that we're outcomes-focused. There's no point in doing any of this unless we actually change some of the fundamental um, indicators that have held the city region back uh, over the years. And it's a very, very inclusive approach. And in your slides, members, you will see the partnership model. It is a very, very simple model. All of the complicated models that have existed in the past, and there were very many complicated models in that very crowded cross-border jurisdictional space, have now been simplified down to the model that is in your slides. The Northwest Strategic Growth Partnership that we represent today is um, six elected representatives from both councils who have been given delegated authority by both councils to take key decisions in relation to economic development, environmental regeneration and community cohesion, um, coupled with senior representatives from all of the government departments from both jurisdictions. Working with that blue box strategic partnership is the green box, which is the development group. And within the development group, we have all of our regional partners, the educational establishments, the chambers of commerce, our communities, the health sector, all of the various sectors. So a very, very simple model. And we believe um, the only model right across the European Union or on the border of the European Union or across two jurisdictions that has cross-community, cross-council, national government participation um, with the authority and with the power to take key decisions in relation to that city region jurisdiction. James. Thanks, John. I, I might just follow on, Chair. Thanks. Um, I suppose John describes the model and um, it being new and, and, and something that we have developed over the past number of years in particular. And I think one of the things that we um, we really need, wanted to do and have done is to ensure that that partnership uh, provides a one voice place for speaking for the needs of the region but more importantly speaking for the potential of the region and driving that potential um, the I suppose the approach in general and at the end of the day we um, look at the work of the partnership uh, with the two councils and with all of the other partners as being um, a, a concerted effort to develop the whole of the region, the whole of the place, 
And I suppose essentially we are about ensuring that things happen and continue to happen in a way that better underpins the functioning of our local communities. As we've he heard from the previous two speakers, uh, you know, when you look at the integral connections that exist between the communities across both council areas, that's particularly important. Also, a very strong focus and alignment of resources and effort around the development of the place. Uh, and in addition to that, then, I suppose, um, the development of policy that underpins both the development of place and the functioning of communities generally. And we do that across three broad um, regionally agreed objectives. First one being economic growth and investment, second one being the physical and environmental development, and the third one being social and community cohesion and well-being. So it's a whole of place, a uh, whole of people, whole of communities approach that I suppose we are now able to plug into a, a structure that brings the local perspective, brings the business perspective, brings all of the partners at local level to it together with the councils, but very importantly affords us an opportunity to connect with um, the uh, programmes of government both north and south so that there's, there's an alignment and we ensure that there is maximum efficiency in the deployment of resources and I suppose essentially what we wanted to ensure is that we would avoid duplication of effort and in particular avoid um, the deployment of competition where collaboration leaves us with better outcomes and what it is really about at the end of the day it's about realising the full potential of our place and that's a place that has the, the fourth largest uh, um, city on the island of Ireland a, uh, a very significant place so jo John referenced I suppose the wider partnership and it, it involves education, uh, business, community, councils, government and I suppose if you take one of the headings, the education and skills and you look at the partners that we have at local level, Ulster University at McGee, the Letter County Institute of Technology, the Northwest Regional College and the and Donegal ETB, so they now working on an aligned basis with I suppose the, the, the coordinated policies of both councils and, uh, and the partners generally around those three broad headings. That has led to things like the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the, the, the four institutions and that uh, is now supported by a resource to develop that and what that ultimately is about at the end of the day is to ensure that the, there is a continued capacity for um, our educational facilities to understand uh, at the soonest possible time the current and emerging needs uh, of skills and education for our communities and for our businesses so that there's a capacity to respond to that on a real-time basis and we have scenarios now where there are bespoke classes being put in place across all four institutions where a hundred percent of the students that uh, come through those courses literally go straight into employment at local level and that's because there has been a joined up approach uh, that, that education hasn't been provided just because of the numbers but that it has been aligned with what the needs are and that is something that wouldn't have happened to that extent before and it's working very well with us. I suppose in addition to that then we have, de we have developed uh, international partnerships uh, across particularly in the US but also in China uh, and indeed the skills development piece has, has been across that as well. In addition to that, you know, it, it now comes as second nature and, and we sort of some, sometimes don't always say it because we expect people know, but we have our joint Northwest promotion and marketing investment. We would never now look at developing something in isolation without ensuring that a collaborative approach is not best. So that, that, that becomes as now second nature to us. In fact, one of the things we're doing right now is we're developing a, a city region dashboard. So that can be there on an iterative basis where all of our citizens and all of our business partners across the board, internal and external and indeed beyond the region, can come in and have a look at what's there, what the opportunities are, what our local stats are, to ensure that there's real-time information around what the opportunities and the requirements of, of our region is. Um, we have had a particular emphasis uh, in support of our small and medium enterprises in, in the northeast of the US. Uh, we have in-market support, support now in the US. Um, one part of it focused on developing opportunities for our SME sector, but more recently a resource that um, we have deployed collectively to help us establish opportunities, particularly on the FDI side, in support of both um, IDA, INI and, and indeed Enterprise Ireland. Um, we, have, we have done a lot of work uh, on Brexit. Brexit analysis. We were the first two councils to collectively commission a detailed piece of work working with uh, Queen's, Ulster University and, and indeed Trinity uh, that began immediately after the referendum. And it provided an opportunity to understand 
and at local level what the issues were and to engage with all of our communities around that and to capture, I suppose, the energy and the concerns that were being developed there at local level and see how they might be constructively managed in a way that we could um, articulate that to both governments but also to the European Union and Brussels and that has been successful. That work has continued and then more recently we would have worked with the other nine councils that, that uh, abut or are near the border to develop a, a whole of border approach to that. I suppose then looking at some of the, the specific examples on that we've done together supporting economy and tourism at local level, things like the, uh, the Dubai Duty Free Irish Open, um, indeed a feasibility study for uh, the deep water cruise ship berthing at, at La Foyle in partnership with Foyle Port, um, and then you know things that we're working on right now like the development of our Northwest Joint Tourism Strategy. I suppose what we've done uh, is to ensure that, that our work together uh, enable us to focus on the practicality of what needs to be done to support communities and some of those uh, examples that I've mentioned do that. But we've also ensured that while that is ongoing, that that effort and energy is deployed in a manner that is consistent with and feeding from both regional and national policies. So there's been a huge focus on ensuring that we articulate into the national process uh, what our needs are, but also feed into it and respect it and develop our, our own policies from that. So maybe I might hand you back to my colleague John on that. Thanks, James. Um, just very briefly, members, in terms of spatial planning, and um, the Kira Seamus um, mentioned this at the very start, probably one of the biggest pieces of work that we originally did um, was in working with government to establish the uh, Derry, Letter, Kenny cross-border city region prominently in the national planning framework and the national development plan. Very importantly, as the fourth largest city region, the primary objective of the city region is to um, become a positive contributor economically um, to, to the economy, both sides of the border. Uh, and to do so, it's, it's really important that it is strategically recognised as such. So we're, we're very pleased with the prominence that the city region has been given uh, in both of those documents, and we hope to um, use that prominence to advance and drive forward many of the outcomes of the city region, and indeed um, deliver for both governments um, on many of the objectives of the respective programmes for government. So that's a very, very important piece of work for us. Um, we are looking at the whole spatial planning piece in the North West, both planning departments in terms of infrastructure, in terms of um, physical development. We're now beginning to look not on a back-to-back -back basis like previously, but on a co-joined approach. And we've mentioned Brexit, and it is, of course, the topic of the day. Um, while the debate continues to rage, um, particularly in Westminster, as to what Brexit might look like at some point in the future. We, as the city region that is probably going to be most impacted by whatever type of Brexit emerges, are already beginning to look at a post-Brexit landscape, um, what the landscape of the northwest city region might look like, what are those opportunities. We focused a great deal on the challenges um, in, in recent years, but how might, how might we move beyond this? into um, a new era, um, no matter how Brexit falls in the coming months. And we've commissioned recently a very exciting piece of work with Harvard University uh, in, in Massachusetts, working in collaboration with Ulster, with Maynooth, and with LYIT to engage our communities to take that piece of work forward. And we're about halfway through that, and we hope to, to finish that piece of work. Um, in the next number of months. So that's a, a really exciting opportunity for any city region uh, to be undertaking, not least one um, in, at this point in time, um, at, at this moment in time. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, thank you for the work that you are doing, and thank you for inviting us here today. Yeah. Uh, our problem has been, I've been on a committee here for many, many years of the Cross-Border Committee, and we have worked and progressed. The committee itself has developed to where we are today, and it's very exciting. Uh, we start off from a position of peripherality from both governments, the most peripheral area, Donegal from Dublin, Derry, Strabane from uh, Belfast or London. And if you start off from that position with a border down the centre of it, you know how that affects economic development. 
And that's where we, we, we came from, and that's where we're working to try to bridge that there. So one of the most, I'm dealing with the most, the environment and infrastructure and regeneration. The regional roads, and the chair, our chairperson mentioned that the A5 N2 is of utmost importance to us. Without that connect to Dublin and also the A6 to Belfast, the development of our roads in the northwest is absolutely crucial to further development and to develop uh, the, uh, the city region. Uh, to have a city region is tremendous without being able to get there or come from there is just not. So that is, uh, we have, and, and a lot of work has been done on the N13, N14, economic order, the 10 T routes, the A6 to Bel uh, Belfast and A5 N2 to Dublin. That to me is the most important uh, thing for us now at the moment. The multi-model transport hub in the waterside is 30 million development taking place there at the train station. But I have reservations about uh, the frequency of the trains and how if you can't leave Derry City and get a connecting train right through to, uh, to Dublin at very Belfast, then that's something that has to be dealt with. We, we, uh, we, we met TIA and I made that point to them that it, it, it's now we have done other major developments but within our own remit. And uh, the Sivan Lippert project uh, is an advanced uh, funding stage. Uh, the North West Greenway is 18 million, uh, uh, right up to uh, 46 kilometres Derry to Muff, from Connor Derry to Sivan. Those things are, are in progress at the moment and it's tremendous funding has been there. The regional greenways technical feasibility study is underway. Airports, we have two airports in the region, City of Derry Airport and Donegal Airport in Castlefin. Uh, information sharing and collaboration and uh, operation on route development is taking place and I think that's very important for us and it's very important that people again can get to the region. Uh, the development of regional energy strategy and climate adaptation strategy is general policy on climate change and, and monitoring the same. I think, but I come back to, I started on this committee many, many years ago, Chair, and I comes back to, to having a proper road structure. Uh, we are doing all this and have demonstrated this to, to governments. And I uh, salute both the chief executives and the councillors for the work that they're doing. But we need infrastructure. We need roads. We don't have a train service into the area other than Derry City. Uh, you can't get that connection Derry to Dublin. And I think that's something that should be uh, insisted upon. And I, I believe that everything together we would have a um, much better area. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Baron. Close. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, for inviting us here today. I think it's, uh, I mean, this is my second time here. I think the last time I came was uh, uh, during the, the, uh, the North West Rural Development. It was uh, more an under egg program. And I think that then we, we, we raised many of the issues that we are raising here today. And some of them have, some of them have been resolved. Uh, I mean, the, I think the first time we ever talked about the Alton Galvin was when we talked about the a cancer unit. The cancer unit is, is, is up and running, and uh, it, it's pride of place, really. And it does actually help people across, on the cross-border uh, from both sides. Uh, now, as I say, there's many projects that we do actually run together in relation to uh, Donegal and Derry and Strabane. And I think one of the things that I want to say is this here, is the relationship has actually uh, has blossomed. 
over the last five, uh, over the last four years. Prior to that, we had a good relationship, but we tended to be sort of uh, in, in, in silos because in the past, where you had uh, maybe one, t we had maybe some as, as many as six councils working together. Now we have two, and two, uh, and two major, uh, and there's two major councils there uh, in the northwest. I think that the, 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 one of the most important things for us is that the relationships that are built up now uh, continue even after Brexit, because people think, I mean, we don't know what, what it's going to look like, but it's definitely on its way. We don't know exactly how soft it will be or how hard it will be, but I think that this should not affect the Derry-Donegal partnership, uh, Derry and Stavane donegal partnership. I think it's very, very important. I think the second thing I want to say is that uh, over the years, I think that there has been a lack of investment to say the least, in the North West. I think I mean, that, that doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to, to know that. And you'd be well aware of that, Chair, yourself. Uh, but what I want to talk to you today is about health and well-being. I think that uh, if I look at all the projects that we've done, probably the cross-border one in relation to uh, greenways and to actually environmental, uh, environmental development, uh, if we look at Inch and we look at Ballykelly, I think that those are a good example of what actually can be done uh, when, 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 when people get together and start to think as a, as a, as a unit. Uh, this particular, the, the, I, I, this, this project, uh, I, I just launched it there uh, two weeks ago in relation for, for on behalf of the North West, and uh, it was the North West Sports Development. Now this is this is meant that all the sports in the northwest, especially the big the big four, in relation to rugby, ladies rugby, cricket, a, a football, Gaelic, etc., have come together, and they will actually the training will be based on a cross border emphasis. It will not actually simply look at people who think, but we look at the whole, and obviously that is that that's good for all Ireland. Because what you see there, when, when people come together and work at those lower levels, I think that it evolves very, very quickly. Where friendships are, 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 are cemented and, and built on, then of course they, they, they actually they remain. They're not they're not superimposed. They're, they're there because people want to be in them. And I think that uh, if we look at if we look at our region at this present point in time, and I mean I'm glad that everybody has got the word now region. Uh, because for a while there, uh, uh, you, you would have thought we were sort of a, a small area. And when you look at the, the, the population in terms of the northwest, you're looking at about 330,000. If you look at Derry on its own, uh, Derry and Stavane on its own, you're looking at 149. So there is a, 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 a significant uh, a sort of uh, uh, number in terms of the needs and, uh, and how you pay for them. And I think that's where that, that's where the, that, that's that's where the real problem comes on, how you pay for them. Uh, I think that uh, when when we set out our, our stall, I think that uh, we sat down now, uh, together, as, and our officers sit down together, and they look at what the strategy is and how the, the strategy can best be, be best fulfilled in terms of uh, the, the most economic way. And I think that if you look at the, the most recent one, the most recent trip to Boston and around there, I think that you can actually see, you can see how beneficial it was to us. I mean, there, there, there's very few of the, of the groups that went out there that are not doing business now with, with, with Boston and, and the northwest of, of America. Uh, I think the only thing about, uh, we're talking about here, we want to sort of evolve the, the grassroots a, a, a sort of organisations like sport. I mean, that's only one of the many. But I think that in terms of where you go to next, I think that's the important thing. I think the city region, regardless of whether Brexit comes or not, needs to go ahead. It's not that we want it to go ahead. It needs to go ahead because it needs to, we need to send a message out to the rest of the world and the rest of Europe. Look, we're open for business. So, Chair, in relation to those issues, I hope that you continue to support us. Now, when people talk about the Good Friday Agreement, I think they tend not to actually look at the detail. 
and I think that that's, that's something that we need to be very, very aware of. And it wouldn't have happened without, pro, uh, without pro, uh, partnership and, uh, and, and, and development and relationships being re, be built and be built on a foundation that was solid because otherwise it would have fell apart. Now, there is those within the, the north of Ireland who would love to see it dismantled. We're well aware of that. But we, are, we, we obviously are not on the basis. We're not, we are not here to actually uh, support that premise because I think some of the things that need to be done need to be done immediately. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Chair, Chair May, uh, just to finish up, if we can, and when we talk and we've heard a lot about what we are doing, and I suppose what is important today is that we lay out what our next steps or what we want our next steps to be and where we see assistance from your own committee and indeed other committees within these houses. And if we look at the current projects that are approved and the initiatives that have been approved uh, by the EU and by both governments, it is absolutely essential that the approved projects and initiatives are continued to fruition and to completion. Uh, we do know that with the impending decisions that could be made, that there may be a, a premise that, that funding from different sectors could be, could be stopped for projects on either side of the border. And we would be very strongly requesting uh, and compelling uh, you to do everything in your powers and the committee's power to ensure that any projects or initiatives that have been uh, approved or have commenced are finished to fruition and are seen out for the betterment of the whole region. We see also uh, much discussion in regards to Derry City receiving a city deal uh, from the British Government. Uh, and talks, I understand, are at a very advanced stage. Uh, they are of a sensitive nature, but they are at an advanced stage. Uh, we have taken an initiative uh, at, a, at a political and an executive level where we have uh, signed uh, a letter and asked the Taunashe and Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade, Simon Coveney, that if a city deal is given for one part of the region, uh, that the Donegal side of the border would also receive somewhat of similar funding to realise the full potential of the southern part of the border in Donegal. And I think that's something that we absolutely need to happen, and we're looking forward to that. Um, we see inward investment coming into to Ireland on a daily basis. Uh, we as councils are working very hard to get inward investment into our own area and our own region, uh, and I commend the councils for doing that. And perhaps, perhaps, Chairman, uh, if the, the bodies that are charged at a national level uh, to take inward investment to all parts of this island uh, were doing their job, there wouldn't be as much of an onus or a premise on our councils to work as hard as they are uh, in trying to attract inward investment to a particular region in the northwest of this island that can be forgotten about sometimes. And we want to ensure that we are at the table and that when we are at the table we are taken seriously, and that's why we're delighted to have the invitation for today. Um, there is, of course, the potential future territorial cooperation funding, and we look forward uh, to that commencing and to that continuing in, into the future. And on, in that regard, I want to particularly, on behalf of the group and on behalf of the North West Strategic Growth Partnership, uh, thank the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Taunashe, Simon Coveney, and indeed the Northern Ireland Executive Office for their commitment, for their collaboration, for their buy-in. Uh, and for the vision that they have seen in what we are doing uh, to continue to support us. And we ask them uh, to have faith in us and to continue to support us uh, because we are doing it for the betterment of our region, of our council, of our people, of our education, of our health, of our infrastructure, and every facet of what is needed in those areas, not in Donegal, not in Derry, but in the whole uh, circumference of the area. We would also ask the committee um, to ensure that the North West Partnership funding is continued and indeed renewed. Uh, there has been a tranche of funding that has been put in and invested in what we are doing as two councils. And we are asking today, formally, I suppose, uh, that that investment is continued into the future, irrespective of what happens in Westminster or what decisions are taken at EU level, so that what we are doing can be strengthened, built upon into the future, and that the full potential of our region can be realised. And, and we'd ask yourself or indeed Deputy Crow to use your good offices to ensure that that happens. And in a final word, um, I want to congratulate the committee for the work that you have done to date. Uh, we are very much aware of the good work and the hard work and the diligent work that this committee undertakes on behalf of all of the people, both north and south, in regards to the Good Friday Agreement. And we want to heartily congratulate you for that work. We want to work with you in the future. And if there is anything that we can do as a body of people 
either politically or on an executive side, we are more than willing to assist and help in whatever manner that we can, because we do believe that the work that you are doing and the things that you are trying to achieve will be beneficial to all of Ireland and all of the island, and we wish his continued help, support, cooperation, and we look forward to the results hereafter. Gramila Mike. Well, um, firstly, before handing over to the members, I'd just like to um, testify to your uh, success to date, because a number of us from the committee were over in Washington as part of the Good Friday Agreement, and no matter what office you seemed to go into, your strap line was there in terms of your promotion. And I thought that was great to see that uh, spread out into into, uh, into the US. Um, I just want to commend you for not just the presentation, but indeed uh, the strap line, the gateway for growth, but equally to support and empathise with the areas that you've covered. I'm not going to go back over them, uh, and uh, to wish you well in the future. Uh, and I'll start with uh, Brendan Smith. Um, thank you very much, Kyrie. And could I just um, thank the delegation for the excellence of their presentations? Extremely detailed, well presented, a positive, but outlining the challenges as well that face the region. And as our Kahirok said, um, this meeting follows on from the very detailed briefing we had with you in the Guildhall some months ago. I recall very well in my earliest days here in the Oireachtas that the late Senator Paddy McGowan of Donegal, who was a powerful advocate in this Oireachtas in relation to the needs of Donegal and neighbouring counties and the North West in particular, he always spoke about the potential for cross-border development. That was in the early 1990s when things were rather dark on this island, and um, he still kept outlining the potential. And when we listen to you today and see in Derry and Donegal the huge cooperation and the results of that cooperation, the benefits for the entire people um, in both sides of the border, of the different initiatives that have been painstakingly put in place, it's, it's a great forward step that has been achieved. And I have to say that wasn't achieved without people from all political sides stepping out of a comfort zone and, and, and pushing out the boundaries in the, for the benefit of in the, working in the best interests of all the people. Um, could I just say that I'm delighted that the, the Cahirlock Seamus mentioned with the Memorandum of Understanding being signed with the North West Regional North West Regional North and West Regional Assembly. I was speaking to some of the members of that assembly on the day they were in the Guild Hall with you, and they were very glad that that particular MOU was signed. When you think of the counties that are represented in the North and West Regional Assembly, Cavan and Leitrim, um, Sligo, Roscommon, Mayo and Galway. And it's very, very important that Derry, the, the part of Tyrone that's in your catchment area in Donegal, that you're working and collaborating with your neighbours in, in that part of the country as well, because there are many similar needs. And of course, in that area, there are similar um, opportunities for, for development as well, working together. Could I just say, oftentimes when, when we think of the, the western half of the country, maybe away from the east coast in particular, we always think of the older age cohort. It's very heartening to listen and to see the statistic there in regard to the 350,000 population in your immediate area, that 35 per cent of that cohort of people are under the age of 25. That's, that's a very encouraging um, piece of information, and it obviously bodes very well for the future. And again, as as Seamus, the Chief Executive, outlined, and Mr Kelpie as well, the huge effort to ensure the retention of people in the area through the third level and further education. Because we all know it's where people are educated at further education and third level that they often continue to reside. So keeping that talent and those people in your region is very, very important. And I, we had the opportunity to meet some of the colleges when we were in Derry, and prior to that, we met the Letter Kenny Institute people on a previous visit. It's great to see that cooperation, that collaboration, and that putting the best use resources that are always limited as well. Could I, could I just say, in, in, during the course of the last Dáil, at my request, this committee met um, Donegal, and I think it was Oma District Council at the time, in regard to the development of the um, N2A5 
I have requested that the, you make presentations to this committee. And at that time, when the project wasn't moving on, we, we were conscious here in this committee of keeping that project on the agenda. And it's every one of you spoke today about the importance of that. I know about the importance of it from, from part of my own constituency, from the Monaghan side, and any of us who travel directly from Dublin to Letterkenny on to Derry, we know of that yawning gap in infrastructure that needs to be reversed. And consistently over the years, we, ha we have supported that project, and we want to see it move forward. It's absolutely essential. And just all of us are aware that, the, the, that we don't know what the outcome of Brexit will be, but it will be negative anyway for Ireland, regardless of what form of Brexit arises, it's going to have a negative adverse impact for all of our island. But could I just say, and I, I have repeated it in the Dáil Chamber and at committees here, the Foreign Affairs Committee and this committee, within the competence of our own government are decisions in regard to investment and in infrastructure. There are some areas that unfortunately the government of the day of the Iraq this will not get their way on. And so, some areas that are outside the national competence that will be decided in other fora. But could it just say, and I think we should appeal to the government again, to identify the infrastructural needs and prioritise the infrastructural needs of the border region that will be impacted first and most adversely by Brexit. If we don't have a modern infrastructure to try to assist businesses remain competitive, to make our region easier to get to, then we will be in difficulty. So the lack of the N2A5 upgrade, absolutely essential, as are other road links throughout the Derry Donegal region and also down in the north and west region as well. So I, 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 all of us here in the Oireachtas, I know, and I'm sure it's happened in other parliamentary assemblies as well, we've asked the government to prioritise the infrastructural needs of the border region. That's at the frontier of Brexit, if you want to call it that. All our island will be impacted by Brexit, but we are literally at the frontier, so we are. And, and I have to say, today it's, it's heartening to listen to you, what has been achieved. When I go back to my earliest days in the Rochtas and listening to colleagues, both the colleagues from Donegal and the North West, and listening to councillors over the years too that I know through party meetings and other fora. It's heartening to know what has been achieved, but it's also a challenge to all of us to ensure that the potential that can be realised, that it should be realised in the best interests of our people. And again, I go back to the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding with the North and West Regional Assembly. We had the Irish Central Border Area ne Network, ICBAN, and the Eastern Border Region that the Cahiro here was very closely associated with in the past. They came to this committee some weeks ago and made excellent presentations as well. There's a determination within each of these regional groupings to deal with the challenges that we have. And I, I'd be very glad, in, in, as a member of the ROCs here, to continue to support your very, very important and valuable work. Well, Thank you, uh, Cahiro. Alicia. Thank you. It's great to see the guys and the committee today and as already has been alluded to, we did have a presentation from the partnership uh, a number of months ago in the city region but as I say it's, it's great for you to be down here um, in, in Dublin presenting today. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge advocate, as you all know, of the work of the partnership. I'm extremely supportive and indeed I'm very proud to be somewhat associated with the work uh, that has been carried out to date with the partnership. And, you know, I, I think everyone spoke of the uniqueness of the cooperation and collaboration. And it's true, it's fair to say there is nothing of the like elsewhere. You know, there has been various attempts of cross-border initiatives over the past number of years, but what is happening in the Northwest, I have absolutely no doubt, is, is unique. And it's something I, I suppose that all our border constituencies should be looking at as a potential model for future development. In relation to uh, the next steps uh, that, that you have here in the presentation, there, there's a number of asks and I think it would be important as a committee that we, we go through them and maybe make some suggestions in relation to them. I start from the bottom, uh, the continued partnership funding. There was a, a question posed to Antishak by our party leader a number of weeks ago in relation to the commitment from the Irish government and for their uh, financial assistance. Uh, I'm glad to say that 
uh, and Taoiseach w spoke very favourably in relation to it, but as a committee, uh, could we maybe seek clarity on where that's sitting at present, just to ensure that uh, there is no confusion coming to the stage of uh, the, the finalised current budget. Uh, the potential territorial cooperation, uh, just a note, I, I actually met in uh, Brussels a few weeks ago with the Vice Chairman of the Regional Development Committee in Europe, uh, MEP Zeller, to speak about the uniqueness of the cross-border areas. And I think we do need to ask specifically the Irish government. The Irish government are in conversations with the Commission in relation to potential post-Brexit funding. My understanding to date is that that won't come into the northern constituencies, which is entirely inappropriate, in my opinion. Um, so I think there needs to be a conversation uh, with the Irish government in relation to the plea that, that any post-Brexit funding does come into uh, the six counties of the north, and that a particular focus of that funding is indeed in the, the border constituencies, because it, it has already been referenced here, and there's absolutely no doubt, report after report shows that the border constituencies will, without a doubt, be the worst impacted areas good, bad, any type of Brexit. Uh, I have seen a report very recently where the constituency that I represent has come uh, to the bottom of two, particularly 650th out of the Westminster constituencies in relation to the cost of food and, and, um, and living standards and any potential post-Brexit. So, you know, the border constituencies, and that's not even unique to the North West, as you can imagine, all of the border constituencies are going to have problems. So, again, I think there needs to be conversations with the Irish government in relation to the, the post-Brexit territorial funding that's potentially coming from Europe. Um, in relation to the inward investment and economic development ask, uh, Sinn Féin do regularly meet with officials and the government here in, in the South and indeed the British government and the officials in uh, NICS to ensure that there is collaborative funding. There is no point in funding the North West region solely from either a Westminster point of view, the Northern Executive end, uh, and, and forgetting about the Irish government. It's fair to say that the Irish government have uh, again spoke very favourably in relation to standing up to the mark and potentially putting in additional funding at a stage when they think it's appropriate. I'm just a little bit concerned about when that is and who makes that ask. Uh, I'm familiar with the letter that has gone from yourselves as a, as a partnership to the government here in, in the south in relation to uh, potential funding. But again, I just think as a committee uh, we could maybe flesh that out a bit and see where the conversations are in relation to the departments down here. In particular, I think it may be useful if a request is, is, is sent from this committee to Minister McHugh um, in relation to the education, the, 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 the cross-border education initiatives that we're, we're, we're discussing. And I know there's the potential of um, some conversation, no, the, the potential of investment into the university in the city region. Again, I'm just not sure how, f how f uh, far those conversations have developed, uh, and I think they do need to move on uh, from where they currently are. Everyone's talked about the A5. Of course, uh, we're all supportive of the A5. Uh, my party colleague. Last month, I believe, uh, was it in this very meeting, Antonis just Simon Coveney was in, and we, we discussed the absolute necessity for the completion of the A5. I actually I, I giggled to myself yesterday because I was quite excited when I seen a notification in the Dairy Journal in relation to the A5, and I, I thought it's either extremely sad for me to be uh, excited about. Uh, uh, I, I think it was. Um, uh, in relation to the, uh, an environmental impact, but all the same, there is movement in relation to the A5. We just need to ensure that that doesn't stop in the way that it has stopped in the past. Again, we have heard commitment from uh, the Irish government at various levels that, that the funding 
will be available at such times. What we need to ensure is that uh, the department in the north move it as quickly as possible. But again, I have some faith that that is moving in the right direction. It is a flagship project, and I take uh, uh, Brandon's point in relation to you know, the, the, the need for projects such as the A5 to be ring-fenced in some way, you know, because of the changes in, in the government. The way we did it in the north was that we deemed it a flagship project, so irregardless of who, which minister comes in from here on in, the, the government need to ensure that it continues. So maybe again, if that could be something that could be considered um, from this end. But just to congratulate all of you for the work that you have undertaken, I, I would maybe suggest a follow-up from your end as well to the, uh, the Vice Chair of the Regional Development Committee, just to maybe uh, reflect on the conversations in relation to bringing the, the potential post-Brexit post, um, funding into the North West and indeed all of the Board of Constituencies. But again, congratulations for the huge volume of work that you have all undertaken. And I have I've no doubt, Brexit or no Brexit, that this relationship will continue to flourish. It has to. We have no choice. Uh, we are in the periphery, and I think that the work that has been undertaken to date can uh, only grow in the, in the years and months ahead. And anything that we as a committee, and indeed we as a party, can do to help it, we certainly uh, will do. So thank you very much, folks. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you for the presentation and commend you for the work you've been doing and continue to do. I represent a border constituency. I also represent a city in your <coughs> maybe not in your eyes as important as Derry, but certainly in our eyes just as important. Um, in terms of city deals, we have been tied in, Uri Morning and Down have been tied in with Belfast. So our sort of bonus will be the Southern Relief Road. Uh, when the money comes through and also regeneration of the city. But I think we're very aware of the same problems in terms of cross-border workers and how that will impact. I mean, my background is dealing with benefits in that and I can see the complex cases in relation to things like uh, tax credits will become ten times more complex. So there's huge issues that are going to affect people on a very, very day-to-day -day basis and I think that's, that's very important. But um, I think whatever sort of a Brexit will happen, it will be uh, adverse to both yourselves and to the area and constituency that I represent. So it's just really to commend you on the work. It's been very interesting listening to the presentation. And obviously, again, we do have a lot in common. Yuri Morning Down and Louth County Council have a memorandum of understanding which has been signed for many years, and that continues. It's very good cross-border cooperation. Obviously, we are allied to Dundalk and Drogheda, um, so that all that work is ongoing. So again, just congratulations and thanks very much for the presentation. Thank you. Um, I can go back to you, lads, or I can take two final responses. Will you prefer just we deal? Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Francie. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Kerda, and also the panel for the, uh, the presentation. I think it's a very positive presentation. Uh, it's good to see that uh, cooperation across the councils uh, to erode the border and the uh, effects that the active border has within the two areas, two council areas. I think the issue of the F5 is a very important one, not just for your own area. Uh, I travel back and forth to Donegal quite a bit, and uh, certainly when you travel from Dungannon. Uh, to Donegal, you can see the importance of it at every stage of the way, uh, both for the development of Donegal and also the development of the entire North West region. So that is one thing I, I think we need to keep it on the agenda uh, and not allow it to become a political football either, uh, because I think the danger is that it, it can be used in that way. So it is very important we should try and encourage the, uh, those along the way to actually to allow it to proceed uh, and to uh, be in place as quickly as possible because it's very, very important with them. The other area I think is, is important is the court in regard to the cross-border health uh, and well-being because I think the issue of Altergelvin and the effect that it has had for cancer patients in particular but also for the health cooperation uh, has just opened up 
the uh, Donegal into a whole new dimension there. And from the Assembly point of view, some years back we had good work there in relation to Alta Gilvan and the tie in with Court uh, into the uh, the cross border development. So hopefully that continues to do it. Uh, the other area I think is the whole issue of training and employment. Uh, because I, I deal in an area in Mid Ulster and Tyrone, which is high in engineering, but one of the big problems we're actually having is the availability of labour, uh, and we need to find ways of training uh, new people, but also to attract young new people into it, both men and women, uh, into the engineering sector. Because otherwise, I think the engineering sector is going to move on somewhere else, uh, and the danger is that those jobs are lost. To the entire region. So I think if we can look at, at training and employment as a means of keeping people in the area, but also retraining, and a lot of people who actually have been in other different types of jobs uh, and for various different reasons, uh, maybe would go for retraining into the engineering sector. It, it's, an, it's a whole new dimension. But I was talking to some people last week, and they're looking at the whole issue about robots to actually do the engineering and welding, those skills, that would be an awful loss to the area if we actually finish up with the uh, young people having to move away from there. So thank you very much for the presentation and for the work that you're doing. I think it's a very, very important work within it uh, and I've been congratulated on the presentation. Thank you, Francie. Uh, before I go back uh, to the witness, I just want to say that any proposals that have come forward here today will be brought for approval at the next meeting, which is actually next week of the Good Friday. Um, so, Seamus, sir. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chairman. And I suppose, on behalf of all of us, we, we very much appreciate the, the support and the empathy, and more than anything, the understanding uh, that is shown here today, because we do have a particular set of circumstances in the region that we are from. Um, Alicia, of course, is most familiar with them because she represents that area and works closely with ourselves uh, within the grouping. And I suppose. It's heartening uh, to hear a group of people of influence uh, that, that are in effect saying we are here to support you, we are here to work with you, because we do feel uh, very much that we are doing great work ourselves and that we are making a difference not only in the region that we represent but as you have quite rightly outlined, Chairman, uh, overseas and beyond to show people what we have to offer how we can offer it and what is there if they want to return and indeed give opportunities to businesses and economic drivers in our own region overseas. And that's something that we have worked hard at over the last number of recent years. That would not have come about, uh, and I think it's important that we, we record it publicly, it would not have come about had it not been and if it were not for the fact that both chief executives uh, were, I suppose, comfortable with each other and confident enough in themselves to understand and realise that this was not about their own jurisdictions or their own jobs, it was about the people in all of the region and the political representatives then followed on from the conference that was shown by the chief executives and we commend you uh, very highly for that. But we now find ourselves in a situation that decisions which have, have not been taken uh, by anybody on this island, anywhere on this island, may impact more on the region that we represent than any other region in all of Europe. Uh, and we are, as, as Deputy Smith outlined, we are going to champion it. We are resilient. We believe in what we have to offer. We believe what we have to offer is as good as anywhere else in Europe. Uh, we look at, at broadband speeds, for instance, in the likes of Donegal and Derry, uh, from Derry to Letterkenny through the Kelvin project, and they are on par with the fastest broadband speeds in, in Europe. And that's not something people uh, would understand or recognise about the region because they see it as a rural area in Donegal and the sea, uh, of course Derry being a city. But, but we have things that we can celebrate and things that we can sell and things that we can champion. And we, d we, we are of the opinion that we will do that irrespective of what decisions are taken and what impacts they have on us. And all that we are seeking from this committee and all of the Iraq is, is a little bit of support, cooperation and a little bit of funding, of course, to allow us to realise our full potential, not for us, but for the people within that area. Uh, and I thank each and every one of you for uh, your input, for your kind words, for your supportive words, and we look very much forward to a good, bright, uh, forward-thinking future uh, for all of the people in our area. And we do look at things uh, like 
a connection of rail from Derry into Letterkenny. We do look at transport hubs in Letterkenny. We look at uh, the need for the waterside transport hub and how that will benefit all of the people of the region, but more than anything else, and we'll stress again, and as Deputy Smith and Alicia and others have said, um, the A5 is something that is integral to anything that we will do or anything we will be able to achieve, uh, such as the importance of it, and we just want to stress that point. But uh, by way of summation, I thank each and every one of you for the time that you've taken. I thank uh, yourselves for the invitation to be here, and indeed I thank my colleagues for the, the way that they uh, cooperated and put presentations very concisely and precisely across. So, Gramila Moy. Well, good. Um, Thank you for your excellent presentation. Just to, I want also to acknowledge, obviously, the friend, uh, your other Oireachtas members from Donegal, including Pat the Pope, who was here uh, for a short period, and their cooperation and working with you, along with all of your councillors, both uh, in, in, in Derry and indeed the North West generally. Uh, so, my focal score, the while I'm aware of the live, I thought on Deesburg, there was on Tash Bontus. Vishe or Ewis, Augustus Suller, Gwil and Regun, Eg Ober, Gudlu Lekele, E Tirkonel, Augus Gura, Augus Toshe Foster Suller, Gwilchev, Er Ian Go, Augus on Shanachel, Svar Lumse, Toshe Suller, Gwilche Gober, Thoregun Shin, Ninyarko Kor Lekele, Augus Be and Bua, Augus Sedera, Gromakov. Thank you. And we can assure Francie and others that old rivalries will re-emerge in May when the ball is thrown in <laughs> and they off the championship yeah. again. So it's, it's yeah, yeah, the meeting is now stands adjourned and we will be meeting next Thursday. Next Thursday. At least we have a decent football April. team, I'm on saying. <laughs>